All right, just got out of uh, Costa Blue Harris and stopped by in Oxo. Got some of these Squirrel X's. These blue ones are my favorite. Got a whole bag full of uh, hydration, and we are about 50 minutes away. So we're gonna get through Cancun, make our way down to Puerto Morelos. All right, just pulled off uh, the highway. Now we're on a dirt road. We're about 15 minutes away. I did read or hear that some of the taxis don't like going on this dirt road, which is why I hired professional transportation. So uh, yeah, 15 minutes away, things are getting really, really jungly, really rural. We'll be there soon. All right, we are pulling up. This looks really cool. I'm digging the vibe already. It went from a highway to isolated in about 15 minutes. <laughs> it is bumpy. I can see why some taxis don't want to come back in here. This is so remote. I can't believe there's a hotel back here. It got dark really quick. It's like 2.30, not even. But it's so dark, uh, I turned my camera on and the flash is on. That's how dark it is. This is so crazy. I lost internet about five minutes ago and I officially just lost GPS. I'm not even sure if that's possible, but I got no GPS. So this is, uh, this is off grid. We're both lost. Maybe straight? Amigo, I've never been here. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know. For me, it's the first time also. See? Not only is there no internet, no GPS, uh, no directions either. There are no signs. Just random driveways. All right, the road is opening up down here. All right, we found it. You just have to go all the way to the end. It's here. Yeah, it's here. Yeah, I, I think we just go in that way. All right, I'm going to go up to this door and knock. Wow, look at this. This is so remote. So cool. Hola. Hola, amigo. Hi. Hi. How are you? Wow, this is, look at this. This is exactly what I needed. Yeah. yeah. So you have your own cenote here. Yes, this is our cenote animal. It has animals. No, no animals. No animals. I'm the only animal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we will be the only animal there. It's in there. What's the temperature? Cold. It's cold. I don't know. Uh, well, fresh. And then this is the restaurant right here? Yes, the restaurant is upstairs. Upstairs? Uh -huh. Okay. And this way is the room. This is a general uh, area we call La Playita. Because it contains natural sand. Oh, this is cool. Yeah. This is our pool. This is natural sand right here. Yeah. Uh, the water uh, of the pool is so not the water. Same temperature or warmer? <laughs> no, same, same temperature. Cold. Yeah, I don't. Okay. I don't mind it. I don't okay. mind. Yeah. yeah. All right. So this is my room. It is the lamb. It means jaguar in Mayan. Uh -huh. And then here is my bubble. Look how cool this is. Uh, so this you... is my whole bubble area right yes. here, this entire area. Just for you, nobody else can step here. No one else can get in here. Does, is there a fence? Oh, yes. There is a fence. Anybody it's not possible see. to see. Uh -huh. exactly. Right on. You can be naked, and don't worry. Okay. <laughs> uh, wait, it, the bubble contains two bubbles, two doors, I'm sorry. Close the pressure. Yeah. So she said that we have to close the first door uh -huh. before we open up the second one or we will lose pressure. Wow, just wait till you see this. This is so cool. Yes. First impressions are, I love it. It's so cool. It's the coolest thing I've ever done on the channel by far. Uh, you don't even know if I'm in the bubble right now or not. I could be in the bubble. I could not be in the bubble. I am not in the bubble. I am uh, jumping in this jacuzzi. Let's see what this thing is like. It's cold. It is so cold. Yeah, this is not heated at all. Oh my God. Um, the acoustics in there and the natural lighting, it's just, the photos, the videos don't do its justice. They are gorgeous, but they don't do its justice. Um, I'm gonna give you probably a full tour tomorrow uh, when the light is better. It's about 4 p.m. And this area is surprisingly dark. I noticed that when I drove in, uh, that it's so jungly. There's so much um, foliage or cultivation here that uh, it's dark, it's really, really dark. After a few minutes, this is really nice. It's uh, soothing, it's crisp, it's refreshing. It's kind of like jumping in the Pacific. There's a shock factor right away and then it feels really nice. Um, this is so quiet. It's beyond serene, beyond tranquil. It's just still virgin forest right here. 
Uh, this entire space is mine. I know there are people on this property, but I don't hear a soul. This is just so interesting. So I'm gonna spend some time in this jacuzzi, just relax, and then I'll probably take a nap. I might show you a little bit of the bubble tonight, give you a full tour when I wake up. Breakfast, cenote. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff around here. And uh, we'll just see. I haven't had zero plans in a long, long time. It feels really good. So sleeping is gonna be an issue for two reasons. Number one is the sound. It's almost too quiet. Um, you ever seen those videos where it, like the silent rooms make people go crazy? That's kind of what it's like. And then number two, the light, there are no shades. So it'd be real interesting to see what the... Oh, that's a tough door. It's pressurized. It'd be real interesting to see what mornings are like. Uh, after I did fall asleep though, I slept amazing. So these are manual locks. You have to key it and unkey it every single time. Uh, I'm not sure that it matters though in this place. So here is my space. And you step out. And then here is the main area right here. I'm the closest orb, the closest bubble to this main space, and I still didn't hear anybody this entire time. Not really sure what's this way. But yeah, let's get some food and some drinks. I think that's the best way to connect with nature. Super, super indulgence. Uh, this treehouse uh, restaurant is really classy, a unique, upscale, different. I like the different artifacts, like the old school cash register, the carvings, the stump. This place is just oozing with personality, it's just oozing with moxie. So I think it's safe to say that was the most relaxing dinner I had all year. Uh, food was fresh. It's great to finally have some legitimate food, some actual food. Uh, that salad is not going to win any beauty contest, but nice hefty portion of shrimp. And then the ceviche came out like a giant tartare. That thing was delicious. I pretty much inhaled it. No time to chew on that one. Uh, as of right now, I'm going to saunter back to my bubble. Probably call it a night uh, here in a little bit because I got a big day tomorrow. Uh, the acoustics inside that bubble are so interesting. I feel like my voice is sharper, a bit more robotic, like kind of AI-esque. And then when you play something on your phone, or if there's a sound in there, um, it kind of like resonates in your head a little bit. It, you might be able to pick it up when I go inside, but it's so interesting. So this is one of the things that makes this the premium bubble, and that is the deep square jacuzzi. Uh, you could probably fit 10 people in here. It's huge. I like the fact that it's spring water. It is a little cold, but I think that's part of the experience. This entire space is covered in crushed rock, which looks really cool, but it really hurts when you're barefoot. So there are little step stumps here uh, to help guide you back to the front. This entire bubble is shockingly private, and that is because uh, you would have to walk into this space and walk around all the way to the back in order to peer into the bubble. But you can't see in here from any point of this property. Uh, you get inside this door, and one door has to be shut at all times. If both are open, this bubble will deflate. Uh, this is kind of like your vestibule area. On the right, you have this really cool bottle of water. It's apparently rainwater that's captured here and bottled. And then in front of it, uh, a couple of espresso pods, as well as these really cool coffee cups. They're black, but they're speckled and white, and the texture on it is just very, very satisfying. The vestibule is not temperature controlled, but the main area is. There are two AC units, one on each side. Keeping this place cool is not a problem, even on the hottest days. In fact, I don't even have this AC all the way on max. Uh, let me show you the bathroom very quickly. Uh, external sink, you see a bit of a skylight above it. There isn't much lighting in here. Uh, this place really relies on a lot of the natural ambient light. There are a couple more bottles of Sky here placed conveniently for you right by the sink to brush your teeth or whatever. Um, shampoos, really nice towels. And then behind the vanity area, I was very pleased to find out there is a bathroom inside. The pictures online don't show a bathroom and they really don't talk about it. I assumed uh, they were community based, but they're not. There is a private bathroom in here. Not only is there a shower, but it's a rain head shower. And then there is a toilet as well. And then here's the main portion of the room. And this really defines the premium bubble. I don't believe the standard bubbles have this middle room. Uh, it's basically a gigantic clear space. This really is responsible for the majority of light and a majority of comfort in the room. The extra space is really nice. Deep oval soaking tub. I believe this is another feature that makes a premium bubble, I believe. Uh, you have an ottoman right next to it and the views of your acreage outside as well as the jungle are just amazing. And then here is the bedroom. Uh, four post bed. The bed does have a cover on it. Um, I'm not sure if that's for privacy or if that's for light. I'm not using it, but it is there. Uh, there is a telescope here if you want to do some stargazing. 
There is a closet. There are beach towels here waiting for you. The bed has outlets that are integrated into it. Overall, this room is just astoundingly luxurious. The bed is amazingly blissfully comfortable. Uh, there is electricity, there are lamps, dual air conditioners, a really, really high-end soaking tub, really classy oak uh, ottomans and end tables, external sinks, rain head shower. I try not to have expectations when I do this. I've done this enough where they're almost never met. And I must say on this one, I was so excited. It was hard not to form expectations. This is one of the few times that they were actually exceeded, at least as far as like the room and the experience. I am so torn. I just don't know what to do. So I just finished breakfast, by the way, and it is included here, which you find at a lot of resorts like this in Costa Rica but it's not all-inclusive, meaning you can't order seconds or get gigantic portions, it's set. The menu, I think, only has like five options. Um, I don't know what to do. Like, I came here to rest, rejuvenate, re-energize. That was priority number one, but this is such a unique place, and this experience is so special. I really wanna take advantage of it, and plus, me sleeping the entire time is not gonna make a great video, so I just don't know what to do. Um, I think I'm just gonna go with my heart, and go with my gut. And right now it's telling me to take a nap. So after a very lackadaisical morning, extremely, uh, a long siesta and then two cappuccinos, uh, afternoon is here already, stuck up on me. So I'm headed to the cenote right now. This hotel's cenote. And then after that, I'm headed to the pool. I'm also gonna show you some other really cool stuff on property and give you a sneak peek of what I'm doing tomorrow. But before all that, I'm just kinda hanging out in the bubble area uh, where the rooms are. There are only eight bubbles on property and only two premium bubbles. I have one, and then the other premium bubble is on the opposite side of the courtyard. I'm noticing a couple ironies. The first irony is that although I have the premium bubble, you know, the larger space with the upgraded amenities, um, I definitely don't have the best lot. Some of these lots back here are more spacious, more private, and more secluded. The second irony is that these bubbles have zero privacy. I mean, they're transparent, but when you're inside, you are completely shielded and protected from everybody else on property. People in their bubbles cannot see into yours. People from the hotel, even perched up on the second floor, cannot see into your bubble. So even though there is zero privacy, there is complete privacy. And I'm looking at this row of bubbles right here. And they're just kind of floating above the ground. They're just kind of dangling right below the treetops. And they are literally infused with this jungle nature area. And I really think this is more of a glamping experience, high-end glamping. Um, I think it's more glamping than it is boutique hotel. It's definitely a hybrid, but this is absolutely so natural and so organic. It's more of a glamping experience than I think it is a hotel experience. And then this is the epicenter, the heartbeat of the hotel. I'm going to finish my afternoon here, but while I'm walking through it, I might as well show it to you. So we got the pool right here, uh, the sandlot, and then the restaurant up top. This is a naturally occurring sandlot. This was here before the hotel was built. This hotel is only 18 months old, by the way. It's pretty much brand new. The really cool thing about this sandlot or sandy area is that it is perfectly maintained. It is manicured to perfection. It's almost like a Zen garden. I feel bad just walking on it. So we're gonna finish up the afternoon there. Uh, there's some day beds in the shade if you wanna make a whole day of it. Uh, the cool thing is, is that everything is literally instantly away. Like my bubble is only steps away from the main area. Uh, this cenote area is only steps away from the other area. Uh, this is not an intimate property. This is an instant property. The cenote is the first thing you see when you get here. To have a cenote on site is incredible. Um, people travel 60, 90 minutes just to put their feet in a cenote. Uh, if this was a hostel with the most basic rooms, this would be a reason to stay here. And not only do you get your own personal cenote, um, you have a Temazcal experience. And this is what I'm doing tomorrow night. Now, I don't know a lot about this experience, uh, but I saw it online and I was instantly intrigued. So I guess it's like an ancient uh, indigenous uh, Mayan ceremony. A shaman is involved. And uh, I guess they put a fire inside this stone igloo and the shaman gives you some special herbs. Not that special. I was hoping it was going to be plant medicine, but it's not. But still, nonetheless, he gives you like some holistic herbs and you sweat in there for like 30 or 60 minutes. Um, I don't know a lot about it, like I said, but I know I'm doing that tomorrow, so that should be really, really interesting. But you typically have to travel on an excursion to get a shaman to mezcal experience. And you typically have to travel on an excursion to get a cenote experience. You get all that right here. So I'm not the biggest cenote guru or aficionado. I've done a couple. I know enough to be dangerous. I know that not all of them are created equal. That's for sure. Uh, I've spent like 
two hours in the car and been completely disappointed. I think I went to the biggest and baddest one. I think that one was like two hours from Cancun. That was worth a drive. That was phenomenal. But regardless if this was big, small, beautiful, ugly, I got it to myself. Literally, this is my own private cenote. If you've been to one in Cancun or in this Quintana Roo area, you know that they're always so packed and crowded and synthetic. Um, you really can't enjoy your time there. I'm gonna get down there and enjoy this. All right, good morning. Uh, it's around 8 a.m. and I wanted to show you what it's like to wake up here in the morning. It's not nearly as bright as I anticipated. Uh, now, it's a far departure from curtains, certainly blackout curtains, but the tree canopies keep things rather shaded in here, even when the sun is directly overhead. It's not ultra white or, bright, or blindingly bright like I originally thought it could be. Uh, yesterday, I just chilled. I hung out in that cenote for hours, two, maybe even three. I came to the realization that I'm probably never going to have a cenote to myself ever again. Even if I come back here, I think it's a rare occurrence for me to have that much time in one alone. And I just cherished it. Uh, after that, I went to the restaurant just to get a quick bite. And I found out that uh, tacos in this region do not have cheese on them. Just like how real chili doesn't have beans. Uh, tacos in this region don't come with cheese and uh, the meat here that they use is uh, slow cooked over an open flame for 20 hours on the fire that's right outside where I'm going to do that experience later. So I thought that was a really neat story behind the tacos. Um, after that I came back here, I took a nap. This bed is amazing. I am shocked at how nice this bed is. It's perfect. Uh, firm, but with a great touch of like plushness and suppleness. Uh, I probably took like a three hour nap. I woke up later to the evening, just went back to the uh, restaurant, had a gigantic burger, and that was pretty much it. Um, this morning I was gonna wake up and go horseback riding. I was really excited about that, but the excursion that's offered here only is paired with ATV riding. You have to do ATVs and horseback. I just wanted horseback. So when I found out I had to do both, uh, I canceled that. So I probably saved the pool for this morning, maybe afternoon. I want to go check out the public cenote that is down the road. I think it'll be interesting to compare that with the cenote that's on site. I have my shaman experience, uh, the Temescal experience at 1 p.m. That is hopefully going to be fascinating. And then tonight I'm going to save some gluttony for dinner. There's a ribeye on the menu. I've been eyeing this entire time. There's some nachos. Um, I just want to have the best time ever. I want to really appreciate this property, do a lot, but also do nothing at all, which was... The original reason for coming here. So having at least one door shut at all times is not an idle rule. It must be done. Uh, my lock was ajar yesterday and the door is just slightly cracked and uh, the bubble started to deflate like after 15 minutes. Started losing like structural integrity. So I immediately shut the door and I'm like, well, do I have to go to the office and tell them to re-inflate the bubble? Uh, after 15, 20 minutes, it self-healed. It was back to perfection. The air is uh, constantly being circulated. There's incense in there. Uh, it's a very uh, comfortable and advanced place to be. All right, so it's breakfast time. Got some games right here, by the way. Some rummy, uh, some Jenga, some cards. Uh, we shut this place down last night at 10.30 p.m. <laughs> it closes at 10. We had some tequila shots after they closed. And now it's around 8.30 and uh, I see someone. But it's very homey. Um, certainly not your all-inclusive, rigid, scheduled breakfast. So there is the cenote from yesterday. This restaurant overlooks this part as well. And then I'm gonna have my Temescal experience down there. Uh, I probably should not eat a ton before that, but I am starving, so I'm gonna have something. All right, so my final breakfast is in the books. Uh, the menu is really, really limited here, but it's free. And I'm one to never complain about free. So the sun is hitting this pool absolutely perfectly right now. I think it's around 10, 1030. And I'd love to just spend some time here, marinate, have a couple of uh, cold cocktails. But I'm told the cenotes down the way are pretty cool. Maybe this is lost in translation, but I'm told there's seven of them and they're daisy chained all together. So that is really intriguing. Uh, hopefully I can come back here at some point and enjoy the tranquility of this pool setup. And this is where I spent my day yesterday the sun hits it much more in the morning, but it's actually really, really comfortable in the afternoon. Uh, maybe I'll come back here and spend some time as well. Maybe I'll be cenote out, who knows? 
and this is where I'm gonna spend my afternoon. There's a fire inside there. Like you sit in there with the fire, what? Uh, hopefully it's gonna be a great day. I think it's really cool that there's a gate at this hotel. It just adds to its privacy and its mystique and kind of like its special environment that lies behind it. So I am told, my directions are, is that the cenote is 10 minutes this way. Uh, there are really on any street signs, so directions don't make any sense. He says, walk down the road, five or 10 minutes. Let's go check it out. $25 to get in. It's about a five, seven minute walk from the hotel. Uh, there are indeed seven cenotes here five open ones and then two caves for scuba diving so it's just kind of an open setup i'm just going to kind of meander around and hopefully i can find all of them number one and number two were adventurous uh, this entire place feels very adventurous uh, there are little like table and chair hut setups kind of scattered throughout you can really make a day of this if you want number three and number four look really cool and i'm told there's even one that you can cliff jump off of so that was one through five they're all connected uh, I'd say three and five are the coolest. Three is the prominent one. That's the one with the cliff jumping. It's the largest one. It's the most beautiful. And then five was really cool because it was so cavernous. Uh, this is an adventurous uh, one. You know, I've been to the one big one, the huge one, the most famous one. And I went to that one first. So I'm kind of scarred because I think that's still the best one. But it's also the busiest. And I think if, you, if one is looking for something that's more adventurous, more organic, uh, something where you could get your scuba on a little bit, this is actually a really nice setup and you can make a whole day out of it. So uh, I'm going to head back to the hotel and get myself mentally prepared for this Temescal experience. So I just met the shaman and it's on for 1 p.m. Uh, he says it gets to be 45 degrees Celsius on the inside. I'm not sure what that converts to in Fahrenheit, but I know what 30 degrees Celsius feels like and 45 has me a little nervous. Um, I'm going to just chill here at the pool. It's high noon. The sun is hitting this area beautifully. And I think there's no better way to detox than to tox ahead of time. I would like to come back here in the morning. This is such an awesome spot with this huge rock formation backdrop with the big boulders and the cascading waterfall. Uh, the sand lot behind me is a work of art. It's like a Zen garden. I feel bad just stepping on it. You know, you got day beds here that line the perimeter of the sand. You kind of want to be off in the yonder. Of course, the restaurant up top, easily get up there and get some food or maybe even have a drink sent down here. You know, you, you come to a place like this to disconnect, to be one with nature. You don't come for the action, the energy or the vibe. And to be able to enjoy this place pretty much all to myself over the last few days, it's just such a wonderful experience. All right, it is Temescal time. I'm just gonna walk over there, uh, get myself mentally ready for this, uh, yeah. I'm really, really excited about it. 30 degrees, or excuse me, 45 degrees. 45 degrees Celsius seems hot. But I guess that's part of the experience. Life is all about trying new things, getting, out, getting outside your comfort zone, making the uncomfortable comfortable. That's where all the growth and magic happens. So if you continue to do the same thing over and over again, how do you grow? Can't, impossible. So I'm just excited for the culture on this. I'm excited for the... Uh, heritage and just learning uh, what this is all about. This is super, super cool. With the cenote in the background, look at that. That is awesome. So I'm gonna shut this off, go meet my shaman, and uh, I will see you when I see you. The Temescal experience was sensational. It was incredible. Uh, I'm gonna talk more about it in a second. I just got back to my room to change. Um, I didn't wanna turn the camera on right away afterwards. I just wanted to really take it all in. Uh, I'll tell you why I couldn't or didn't film it in a second, but take a look at this. I came back to my room and look at the level of detail and attention to the housekeeping. I didn't even know housekeeping was coming. I left my stuff everywhere. It's my last day in Cancun. And I came back and this is like win level customer service or care. Everything is perfectly hung up, clothes perfectly folded. They even folded the straps to my suitcases. The pieces to my tripod are perfectly arranged and positioned. This is really really impressive this is something you expect to see at a saint regis ritz carlton win encore and you're getting it here at the bubble hotel so i introduced myself to the shaman and i immediately said i don't want to be rude i have so much respect for your culture your traditions your ceremonies and i said what are your thoughts on recording should i do it or is it an experience that is private and really really sacred recommended not to film it so at that point i knew it was going to be something really Special, and it was. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna tell you more about it later. I'm actually gonna get inside there. I'm gonna bring a light in there and uh, kind of walk you through what happened. 
um, I'm so glad that I did it. So I'm gonna get some food. It's uh, late afternoon. I am so hungry after that experience, so hungry. So I, I think it's time for that big dinner. And then uh, at some point I'm gonna come out here, bring my equipment, light it up for you and show you what it's all about. All right, good morning. I am uh, running late. What else is new? But I have to show you this before I leave. I don't care if I miss my taxi. So the shaman was here when I walked back from the cenote yesterday. That was like around 1140. And my ceremony wasn't until one. So he was here early, uh, preparing the stones and the tea and getting everything ready. Uh, he put a bunch of lava rocks in this fire right here. And I'll show you where those go in a second. But he also had some teas and stuff just kind of out here. And Anyway, he, he was very serious. It was a lot more serious and authentic than I ever thought. Honestly, I don't know if I would ever do it again because I'm not sure it would do this one justice. So let me show you what it's all about as I get inside here. So the Temescal experience is a Mayan ceremony and it represents the four elements of this planet, earth, wind, fire, water. Uh, it is a soul cleansing experience. It's one that's supposed to give you spirituality. It's supposed to get you more in tune with yourself. There's a ceremony for each element. There's four separate ceremonies, and these lava rocks are basically put in that fire. They're stoked the entire time. Uh, you set your intentions like you do in a lot of rituals. So for the earth, I said I wanted to be grounded. Uh, you know, for fire, I want to have the passion of fire. For wind, I wanted to travel and grow and be effervescent like the wind. And then for the water, I wanted to flow and uh, be malleable like water, stuff like that. So the shaman is in here with you the entire time. And when he's in here, he covers that opening. So it's completely dark in here, except for the fire. And it gets to be hot. It's like 135 degrees and no water. And you can't leave for the entire hour. So all the ceremonies were different. For the earth one, we had some tea along with the chants and the singing and the prayers. Um, for the fire one, which was by far the craziest, the most intense. Um, it was actually so hot in here, he actually had me come down and sit on the ground because it's cooler down here. And then he doused me in water and uh, was also singing and guiding me through it. Told me to be a warrior, just to relax, be calm. And then for the wind one, it was really cool because there's a porthole up there. And he unplugs it. And during the wind one, all the smoke and stuff in here just in a vortex swirls to the top. So it was, a, it was a really, really neat experience. I would absolutely do it again if it was of this quality or better. Um, I must have probably sweat out like five pounds, maybe even seven pounds. And I had two double cappuccinos after that because I was so tired. I went to bed right after that. I slept like a rock for over two hours and I woke up just feeling lucid, um, clear, cogent, and very, very content and calm. So my time in the bubble and at the bubble hotel is ending, sadly. Um, this is one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. And I didn't think my expectations would be met, let alone exceeded, and they were far exceeded. I feel insanely comfortable here. I am relaxed, I'm calm. This has just done wonders for my psyche and for my soul. This is a spot for those that don't have a high social need. For those that are enduring a lot of stress and just a lot of, of the taxes that go on in life and you want to get away, you want to disconnect, reconnect with nature, maybe even reconnect with yourself, um, this is the spot to do it. To rest, to relax, the staff treats you like you're part of the family. This felt like my home and I just... I really can't wait to come back or even do more stuff like this. If you want to see me do more stuff like this um, and diversify my content a little bit, hit a button, say something, let me know how you feel. I find stuff like this to be just fascinating. And there are volcano hotels, castle hotels, treetop hotels, river hotels. There are so many cool places like this. So if you like this content, let me know. Uh, I'm gonna enjoy my last few precious seconds inside the bubble and uh, then back to reality, sadly. I'll see you in the next video. Don't neglect them, coming with the well respected. Come together, hit you with the shit that's unexpected.